Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh, oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from First Timothy. I hope to come to you soon, but I am writing these instructions to you so that if I am delayed, you may know how one ought to behave in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and bulwark of the truth. Without any doubt, the mystery of our religion is great. He was revealed in flesh, vindicated in spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among Gentiles, believed in throughout the world, taken up in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 111, verses 1 through 6. Let us read together in unison. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and for the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and splendor, and his righteousness endures forever. He makes his marvelous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gives food to those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the lands of the nations. Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. To what then will I compare the people of this generation? And what are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We play the flute for you and you do not dance. We wail and you do not eat. For John the Baptist has come eating no bread and drinking no wine. And you say, he has a king. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, Look, a glutton and drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Nevertheless, wisdom is vindicated by all her children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
God of great wisdom, cover us in your spirit, that I may speak your truth and that they may hear it. In the name of your Son, Amen. Amen. Let us be seated. It's hard to know with great certainty the right thing to do on any given day. In these days, that is more decidedly difficult. Some of these days, in fact, right is clear as mud, and we find ourselves weighing two options, neither of which is good. I'm standing before you today in a nation that is, by choice, only 54% vaccinated. In a state that has taken away the option for women to have abortion after six weeks. In a city that is fighting for the ability to mandate masks in public and in public schools. If you're friends with me on social media, you know that I spent last week working to change a dress code that kept my daughter from wearing a tank top in 100 degree weather. I'm standing before you today at a time that is fraught with confusion, with overwhelm, a time that is loaded with an overabundance of seemingly moral argument. So this passage of Luke, of course, as is always the case, is exactly what I needed to read in this moment, so I could both name the struggles we are facing as a people and hopefully provide hope to move forward into them. At this moment in Luke, John the Baptist has been in prison for some time. He's beginning to doubt Jesus and sends a couple of dis disciples to ask Jesus if he is the one they sent, or if they should wait for someone else. Jesus sends back word to him of all the miracles he's performed and tells John not to lose faith. Jesus gracefully assures him that he is indeed the one who brought about this new age of being. In the passage just before this one, Jesus speaks highly of John, saying he's the one who prepared the way as his messenger. This message, God's purpose, was elevated by John and rejected by the Pharisees and lawyers when they refused to be baptized by him. Today, Jesus speaks to us clearly and not at all kindly about this generation of leaders. Luke uses the word genere, a word he most always used to express contempt. What Luke is creating with his words, with his witness, is a very precise image of children who are divided among themselves. These children are complaining because no one will play with them. Ironically, the children who are complaining are sitting down. Kafmai. They have not chosen to keep playing, to dance or to dirge, as they desire. Instead, they have chosen to sit and holler because no one is doing what they want. These children are complaining about, in real life, Jesus and John. John, they say, is wayward and crazy, wandering the wilderness, dirty and deranged and possessed by demons. Jesus, they say, is horrifyingly the opposite. He's eating and drinking, <laughs> clearly living high on the hog. As such, he is a drunkard and a glutton. What Luke is showing us here is this polarity that's meant to help us. It's meant to help us understand the insatiable nature of this generation of Pharisees and lawyers that he is calling out. Luke's word choice is concise and it's pointed. In this marketplace where civil matters often take place, he has chosen a serious tone and one of justice and consequence. He is creating two sides a division of separation that's embodied. He's also illustrating to these leaders that they do not hold the power or moral authority that they claim, and they certainly don't have a hold over the Son of Man. They assume a moral high ground and belittle John and Jesus, thinking them impermanent, unsteady, they do not yet see that he is the Messiah, 
They do not hear Jesus is speaking truth to power. They do not yet realize that they have none. John and Jesus are being cast as high prophets by Luke, bringing about salvation with their faith and their determination. John has been baptizing people into God's kingdom to the detriment of his freedom. Jesus has performed miracle after miracle, gathering up the people who are unwilling and yet unable to see his purpose. And still, he is willing to give his very life in the process. Then there are these men, these earthly leaders pushing back on their reputation, on their ministry, on God's very will, thinking they can change the trajectory of this story as if they can outwit and outsmart God's highest prophets. Let's remember where we are for a second. And let's be really honest that this is a place that we are entirely familiar with. Here is this moment where Jesus is in Galilee. He's stirring up so much derision and backlash, flouting so many rules and norms that he has upset the entire order. He's blatant and, in fact, blatant about his resistance. That word, so blatant, that word gets back to John that he is eating and drinking and living high on the hog. The rumors are so wild and his behavior is so different from John's that John sends some disciples to ask Jesus, are you the one they sent? Are you, he asks. Even John got confused in the struggle of all that was happening. Jesus answers him, yes, I am the one, and then sidesteps this whole drama swirling around them both in order to offer him grace and bring this parable. And here's what he says. Don't find yourself on the wrong side. There is this generation who carries on with complaint, who sits in place fighting, dug in, and stuck in their ways. And then there's the possibility of new life. I'm bringing you that possibility, as was my cousin John, the forest-dwelling madman. Everything is going to fall apart. It always was. Jesus knew this. He knew it, and he was trying to tell them, and his own disciples couldn't hear what he was saying, couldn't see the truth. We know the same is true today, where we stand. Everything is falling apart. It's what we fear and what we live into as we sit in this chapel on this campus where we are alone. We alone can boast a 96% vaccination rate. We sit in a state that is so dedicated to patriarchy and Christian idealism that we will dismantle the law in order to uphold that. We live in a nation that is choosing to fight as hard to uphold its white oppressive systems as it is to tearing them down. What Luke is bringing us with this parable of Jesus is so timely. This parable is living right here in the Bible and in our world right now. Jesus is saying to us, don't come down on the wrong side of history. Don't choose oppression and power over love and eternal presence. Being present with Jesus in the eschaton, seated at God's right hand, is the only lasting thing that matters. This world is disjointed and divided and pained, but God isn't. God is the wisdom that Luke speaks of. She is lasting and constant. Wisdom plays a very long game. So exhaust yourselves, if you will, with your pettiness and your criticism, she says, but know that this game is eternal. Wisdom never fails to prove herself. And we will be right by her in the end. You have a choice, Jesus is saying. You can stay here and fight over things that cause us all harm. You can split hairs and debate politics and spread hate, or you can follow me. And so I say to you, bring your heart and the Holy Spirit, because we ride at dawn.
Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. And of all the nations and the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. With thankful hearts, especially for Carrie. We ask you to bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, we, are we give thanks for the students of our seminary. Bless Carla and Carol and all those who study in this place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also give thanks for all who labor to further the mission of the seminary. Bless Stephen Tomlinson and all those who labor in this place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Kimberly Amos. Maria, Jamin and Katie, Mary, Moira, Eli, Bishop M. Wade, Allison. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Your we commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Angela Burkefield, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with them and with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who are turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings and come into his courts.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin, become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he gave thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he gave it thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the only food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask to your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we're bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Thank you. 
Body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The bread of heaven. 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 The body of Christ. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.